Hey, how's it going? I'm Lynx, and today we're gonna have a closer look at Light Liz, or Bloody Ellie, or Elizabeth of Eternal Rebirth, whatever you wanna call her. This unit right here. Um, so we're gonna go over her abilities, her passives, uh, her use cases, her gear, everything you need to know about her. So yeah, let's just get right into it. Oh, and do check the timestamps for the different parts of the video in the description down below. So she is the first light attribute hero in the game, and as of right now, the only light attribute hero. Uh, so what does the light attribute do? Well, it decreases the damage light attribute heroes take uh, by 10% from all other attributes, and it also decreases the damage heroes on your team who are uh, who have type advantage against a enemy opponent. Uh, it decreases their damage taken by another 10%. However, I do not know if this stacks with the already inherent 20% damage reduction that those heroes take. So for example, a blue unit uh, would take 20% less damage from a red unit. Uh, does this mean it's 30% or does it mean it's 10% reduction of the already 20% reduction, which would be 28% reduction in damage overall? I mean, that's, that's the difference between 2% right there, but I mean, I don't know, I haven't tested it, but... It, it, it could go either way. Uh, it's not that big of a difference, so I don't think that really matters, but I still wanted to sort of bring it up. Right, so next we have a look at her abilities, and her first card here is a Flood card, which uh, increases damage based on how much health she has left as a percentage. So it's the exact same one as the one Eskinor has. Uh, her second ability here is quite unique to herself. Although I would say it is a mix between uh, Purgatory Bonds, Detonate Card, and uh, um, Festival Gophers, or even Festival Deanne's Pulverize Cards. Uh, so what I mean by this is, well, we can have a look at her card first. So it inflicts damage uh, based on uh, her attack, and then deals additional damage equal to 3, 5, or 8% of max HP for every orb in the hero's ultimate move gauge, so in her own ultimate move gauge. Um, basically what Ban does is something similar, so he inflicts damage based on his own max HP as detonate damage, um, although she doesn't do detonate damage because detonate damage is based on the enemy's ultimate move gauge orb. Instead what she does is something similar to what Gopher has, uh, which is Pulverize, which does additional damage based on uh, each orb in the hero's own ultimate move gauge orb. Uh, although it's, it's not based on attack, uh, hers is based on HP. So, as you can see, she has two attacks which are based on sort of HP, uh, but they're also based on attack. So, when it comes to gearing, we'll have a look at that in a moment, but when it comes to gearing, I don't know, I, I've only ever tested HP defense and it works quite well with her, but I, I guess some attack defense or something could work, attack crit damage maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Um, her ultimate uh, is quite controversial, so it inflicts damage as a percentage of her own max HP, uh, as AoE damage to all enemies, then applies a resurrection buff on all allies for, well, at 6-6 six, six, it's two turns. Um, but at 1-6 to 5-6 it's one turn. Uh, between 1-6 and 3-6 it's a blue buff that can be removed and then 4-6, 5-6 and 6-6 six, six has a grey buff that cannot be removed. So for example Rimuru, if you apply this buff against a Rimuru, uh, he would suck it up. So you would instantly have your uh, resurrection ability removed in PvP against a Rimuru player. Unless, of course, you apply some other buffs before or after that one. Uh, that we get targeted by Remur's passive instead, so... And her unique, though. Uh, it says, every time one of the applicable allies, and the applicable allies, or applicable heroes, as it says here, is herself, uh, any seven deadly sins unit, and every four archangels units. So, for example, any seven deadly sins units, you can go in here and check yeah, it's 7 deadly sins, uh, this is the effect that applies and applies to all of these heroes. So anytime any one of those heroes uses an ability, or any archangels, so for example these right here, anytime one of those, or anytime she herself uses an ability, uh, it increases all of their basic stats by 4%, so attack, defense, HP. 
and stacking up to 6 times, so up to 24%. And then, and then it says, at max stacks, uh, all of those heroes uh, recover 30% of the ma their max HP. Uh, then it increases all of all of the heroes, meaning her, her own stats, by 15% for 5 turns. Uh, does not apply to recovery rate. Right, so uh, she gets 15% all stats, so all of these stats, attack, defense, HP, everything except for recovery rate. And if you have a look at her stats here, actually, uh, she does have quite a lot of crit damage. I do not have any crit damage on my gear. As you see, I have HP defense with attack rolls on my uh, two attack pieces. And she has 231% crit damage. If you have a look at someone like Traitor Melly, he has 225.5 and that's with uh, some crit damage pieces. So he actually gets 20% additional crit damage from that. So she has quite a lot of crit damage. But yeah, as we're on gear here. So the best thing, because all her attacks and even her ultimate use, you know, it's based on like how much health she has. Um, which also increases by uh, by a bit more as, as she gets buffs from her unique. And she's going to do a lot more damage. And um, that's why it's best to go with HP defense. Or, well, I'm going HP defense just because of the added CC bonus. Because she does have quite a lot of CC here. But you could go um, HP crit damage. I think that would work. Although, as, as I mentioned, she does have quite a lot of crit damage, so there would be some diminishing returns. Like, uh, the jump between, as Melly has, 205 and 225 is greater than the jump between 230 to 250. So, there is some diminishing returns there, and honestly I would rather have the CC while doing PvP uh, with this unit than the extra damage she can deal. Uh, just so I can ensure that I go first with this team uh, and that's mainly also because of her passive you do want to stack up her passive first when facing someone in PvP so I would go a HP defense although HP crit damage also works I do not know about attack crit damage um, as I did sort of touch on in the beginning of this video because well it, it is based on attack 300% of attack just like the one Escanor so if you're, if you're just gonna use this card and, and not, not, not even bother with her ult or this card and I don't know attack crit damage could work <laughs> if you're gonna use her like Escanor because that's the gear you put on him and but other than that because this one also does based on attack uh, while her ultimate is purely based on uh, her max HP um, it could work I probably wouldn't go for that, um, mainly because you get so much more CC with this gear. It works well in, P in both PvP and PvE, and yeah, that's the sort of gear I would run. And also uh, substats, of course, just attack, defense, and HP. I don't have the best rolls, and you know, even with these bad rolls, she still has 67.280, but 67k uh, CC here. And that is not even with maxed uh, outfits and um, I haven't maxed this one out and I haven't maxed this one out so yeah all right so next we'll have a look at some different use cases for her and uh, we'll start with pvp and then move on to pve right so for pvp there are quite a few combinations of teams that you can put her in um, this is one of my favorite teams it's really really good it utilizes go first holy relic uh, to increase her attack related stats by 25% when he has his full ult gauge orbs. Uh, it utilizes this Dian here to taunt for us and she has the red Tarmiel link so she can survive quite a bit. She herself has the Sariel here which increases crit damage right here. Uh, it, it, it ignores enemies crit defense so your crit damage will do a lot more damage and as we already mentioned she has a lot of crit damage so she will do a lot of damage with the Sariel. Unfortunately, I don't have HP defense gear for my Sariel, and I only have this gear for him, which is attack crit. Uh, so she only really benefits just a little bit from attack there, I guess, uh, and not at all from HP, which you can get from HP defense gear, uh, and she would get 10% of Sariel's base HP, I guess. 
um, which would really really help her with all of her HP related attack cards uh, so maybe that's a good idea um, but yeah, this is one team that works. Another team is like the, the full Archangel team. Uh, you can have Green, Sariel, Margaret, maybe even uh, Red Tarmel in the front for... Or even Blue Tarmel if you don't have Red Tarmel. Uh, just for some um, alt gauge control. Uh, I do believe the Red Tarmel with his Holy Relic is better for that. Uh, for like stopping Ultra teams and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll just give this team a go and you will see why I like it. Because of her passive, um, you do kind of need to stall, and having Diane here really, really helps with that. Like, you don't need Gopher here. Um, you can run someone else, like Traitor Melee, and then you can have Green Merlin in the back and just go for an Ultra Rush team or something. That works really, really well as well. But here we'll just give it a go and see how it goes. Um, maybe we'll get our ass handed to, our <laughs> to us, but <laughs> we'll just have a look. So we're up against an Archangel's team, and this is really good, because now, now you see the other side of this team and that you can use, like, the most commonly used teams for Goddess Liz here. Um, but we'll go ahead and start building up these two characters. We're not going to touch her cards, because uh, she hasn't built up her passive stacks yet. And she gets one stack of her passive up every time one of my units um, uses a card. And at 6 stacks, she gets an additional 15% all stack increase herself, and th at that point, that's when we're gonna attack. Uh, now, there are two ways to do that. Now, you can either use 3 cards turn 1, then 3 cards turn 2, then she will get 1 stack. Uh, but that means that you will only benefit from her passive for uh, 4 full turns instead of 5 turns. If instead you use 2 cards, this turn. So you use three cards turn one, then you use two cards turn two, and then one card uh, the very following turn. Um, and you get her, th then you can utilize two full attacks and then also five additional turns, or you know, four additional turns after that with her full passive stack going. And um, seeing this, I'm actually gonna, gonna use two cards here. Because I need to use, I need to remove his alt here. So I'm actually gonna do that. And the other way could be better because it would allow me to heal 30%, which would max heal my units if I'd use three cards. And the downside is I, <laughs> I don't have any alt control here, so I actually need to remove his alt. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that in case he gets some mergers. Hope he doesn't get a merger with the. Well, he won't because of that card over there, but that's good. Gopher did take a beating. Uh, if we get a Gopher card, I could go for a Gopher card to get his passive up and then do one or two attacks with uh, Liz here. That's quite nice. Uh, I could go for a Diane taunt and then two Liz single target attacks. That should potentially kill the Sariel there. And then we'll see. Now his Liz is fully passive up. So her health should be quite a bit, and as, and as you can see on the, on the ground here, that indicates that her passive is up. Mine doesn't have that. But if we look at my stats here, and I got 5 passive stacks, 21k attack, 314k HP left. And if I go ahead and do this, that's gonna merge go first. Uh, she will get 5 stacks, then an additional 15%, and then as you can see, 26k attack there and we're gonna attack twice oh the bot played for me <laughs> but that's totally fine oh perhaps i should have used this card but you know what that's totally fine i can probably survive that attack i guess i was explaining too much i should have used this card but <laughs> ah, that's totally fine we'll see if i survive so he's buffing up, taunting up, and then using his ult. Smart man. Gopher died. The other two units survived. And we didn't get our DN ult here. That's a shame. It could have merged, but it didn't. Um, now we can get our Liz ult. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do this. We'll just see how much damage I can deal. So I'm gonna... 
give myself an additional 10% uh, HP or max HP. And then we're gonna use this, which is based on max HP. And we'll see how much damage that does. Now it doesn't have the go for buff. <laughs> With full passive stacks of her and go for buffs, she can hit 1 million damage easily. She didn't there, um, but she should heal back quite a bit. <laughs> to full, actually. <laughs> right, so now we have her ult, and you'll get to see that. It's a 6 6 ult, and so don't expect most people to actually have her 6 6. Uh, which is gonna give us a resurrection, which, when uh, any of our allies dies, uh, <clears throat> for two turns they will revive with 50% health, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, but we'll go ahead and taunt up. Uh, we will actually attack and then remove just in case uh, Liz's ult actually kills the Margaret. Which I don't know if it will. It is a 6 6 ult, but it's not the most strongest. Like if it had Gopher buff, she would have killed. Um, but here we just kill there. Alright. And we get our DN ult. This is quite a lengthy match. I'll probably have to cut this down. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we still have our ba ban buff there, so we can still heal. Um, we do have a Liz buff for another three turns, it should be. Uh, but it's actually getting his Liz ult there. Hopefully I can get one DN card now, so I can remove his ult. It doesn't matter. Um, unfortunately for him, he attacked me twice there, so with the Liz. And he has no way to remove that um, block skill effect. His is only 2 6 also, so it shouldn't do too much damage. I'm actually just gonna get Ban's ult here. And uh, we'll do that. Now, this is the longest PvP match in history. <laughs> it's so long. So he will not get the resurrection. This turn. And because his skills are blocked. Yay for red Tarmiel. And this is actually the last turn with our passive. So I will actually target that like that, go like this, and we will do a single target attack. So hopefully. Oh, they, they aren't buffed. Maybe I should have attacked the Sorrel first, just because he's buffed, but he's still gonna die anyway. And the Tarmel takes quite a bit of damage. Perhaps if I'd used that first... Yeah, perhaps if I'd used like the AoE and the single target first from um, from Liz there, uh, the Tarmel also would have died, but... Yeah, that's gonna be the best death. Do the end attacks on this attack. And we go like that, just to maximize damage. So she does pulverize. Oh yeah, she's dead. And... That should be that for the match. A good game, dude. That was... Quite a lengthy match. <laughs> Alright, but next up, uh, we'll have a look at Liz in PvE. Right, so one of the best use cases for the Light Liz in terms of PvE content is the Knighthood boss battle. Uh, we just reset and on the first try with this team I got 12k points. So basically what you want to do is you want to remove 10 debuffs with Margaret to get 25% additional points. This is actually one of the best teams for quite a few of the Knighthood boss battles so it works very well and it's worked for the last few weeks. So we're just gonna go ahead and give it a go and um, hopefully it will work out, but we'll see. We never know. If it doesn't, you just reset until it works. Um, I got lucky the first try and, and I just first tried it. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and see. Oh, that sucks. That's that's an automatic reset for me. And that's because the chance of him actually debuffing Margaret is so high. So... <laughs> and you don't want Margaret to be debuffed or else you can't remove the debuffs with her buff card. Because uh, that debuff disables buff, buff skills, so... Yeah, you just want to reset like this and go again. Um, it is quite stamina intensive. Uh, two is fine. The best case scenario is if he just uses one. But we'll see here. We'll give it a go. Um, 
We're gonna attack with Saria, we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna do one of those. Because I do not want to kill the green uh, shield there. And if I kill it, then it won't be able to debuff me and I won't be able to complete that mission. We're just gonna go ahead and split the damage like this. Alright. Hopefully it doesn't land on Margaret. If it does, then you just reset. You just reset until it doesn't. <laughs> it landed on Sariel, that's good. And on Nightlies, that's also fine. So this turn we can uh, we can remove the debuffs. We will AoE with Sariel, then single target with uh, Tarmil, and then single target with uh, Liz. If it does kill it, then it will go to the sword. Uh, it does get a lot of damage de uh, reduction uh, from the stand skill. Okay, let's see here. So it kills it. Now this is taking one turn too many. I'm not sure about how the score is gonna look. Um, because you generally you want to kill both of them by turn two, because you do want to stall out a bit. Um, I'm just gonna kill kill this one now. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And just waste some cards. Uh, so now the boss is immune to damage for two turns, and by the end of the Next turn, I actually want Margaret's ult, and uh, by the end of that following turn, I want Liz's ult and I want Sariel's ult, so hopefully we can get the Liz card in the coming turn. Alright, it attacked the perfect one to remove the... Um, what's it called? The ult key jobs from. Alright, uh, we can go ahead and do this. Use one of these. And just waste some cards, hopefully get a Liz card next turn. And then we'll just, I mean, we'll see. It's a crapshoot how much score you actually get uh, in the end. Because you can't stall too long and you can't, you know, speed it up too fast. Alright, but we will have our... So he heals the full. That's totally fine. We do need our Liz ult. Hopefully, Liz won't be able to kill him here. And then we... Oh, that actually sucks, man. So I do want to use this one before I use this one. I can't do that with the Liz here. So our score won't be that great. Uh, it would have been a reset, really. I'm actually just gonna play it safe and go like this. It would have been a reset. Because, you see, she's not doing too much damage. And you do want to get the boss down quite low and then do damage to it, most of it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do this. We're gonna attack like that. And then use a Sariel card. Hopefully we can get more than 9 key points. Just so you can completely buy out the shop or whatever. No, not the shop, but the awards. Alright. It killed both of them, and now Sariel should kill. This is not how I got the 12k points though, because Sariel didn't, or Liz didn't kill both of the side arms or whatever, and uh, Sariel killed it. Then I got Margaret's ult, but yeah, almost 12k points. We we'll call it 12k, right? <laughs> that's one way you can do it. And that's one use case for Liz. Um, Next we'll have a look at the Demonic Beast Battles. Right, so now we're on the Demonic Beast Battles and this is the team we're gonna use. We're gonna use the same target card set and this is the gear. Nothing complicated, but I'm just gonna show you like the problems with Liz. Because she suffers from the same problems that Rimuru does. Uh, which is, she's kind of bad at the start. Like you're not really using her at the start. And then she's good for a while while her passive lasts, and then she sort of falls off again. Although, unlike Reamer, she does buff her te the whole team uh, with basic stats, at least if they are Seven Deadly Sins characters, uh, or Archangel's characters, or herself. Uh, which unfortunately won't count for Arthur or Miguelda here, but it will count for Melee, so we'll just see how it goes, how I can get her stacks up, because I do need to attack with her. I could have run with... Uh, uh, what's it called? 
Uh, I could have run with um, Diane instead of Arthur, uh, but I do want to just speed this up so I'm running Arthur. Because uh, that way I don't really need to get a lot of melee dupes, because melee will do just so much damage with the Arthur there. As well as Miguelda's buffs and his own buffs, and then of course this Lightly's passive buffs, uh, which is going to increase uh, melee's basic stats by up to 25% or 24%. But yeah, we'll see here. I'm just going to. Because now I use two cards, uh, so her passive should be two. Yep. And then we're gonna go ahead and use one. Two, and then three. I'm not sure if it counts uh, as her actually using a card here. I guess I'll. I guess we'll have a look. Does it count if it wastes a card? And it did not count. That's good to know. All right, so now we can actually uh, we can just one shot this phase with Melly there. Or actually attack with Liz and then one shot with Melly. And then I'll just buff and move a card, whatever. I do believe Melly should one shot. Yeah. <laughs> and then we just buff up here just to give Melly a more buff. As if he needed any more. <laughs> right, but now Liz should have four stacks. She has her ult, the ult will count. Uh, and we're actually gonna use it here. Because I'm not sure if it will do any damage on the final phase. Uh, we'll get her her max passive stack there. Actually, we'll see if it does. So, we'll use these cards and just waste a bunch of cards. Um, the reason I'm actually using Liz here. And I actually didn't want to bring the is for phase two floor or floor two phase two, and because there are three ways or actually four ways because you can just phase tank it uh, to actually mitigate the damage. So either you taunt up with a taunt unit, which I don't have, or you use a unit with an ult that hits twice, which I don't have, or in this case you just use her ult and have the revive thing, which we will see in this video. Uh, I'll probably speed this up, maybe. We'll see. But now she has her full passive. But hopefully we'll get another melee card, because we haven't gotten a single melee target, si uh, melee, melee single target card. And we still didn't. <laughs> Alright, don't fail us, Liz. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we're gonna attack with Liz. Can she do damage here? Maybe, we will see. Very, very little. At least with the bronze card. That one did a lot more. And that's good to know. Uh, I guess we'll see how much damage a silver card there does. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and do this. Just to get Melis ult. Just so I don't screw myself on this boss. <laughs> so I can kill him by next turn. Yeah, she does so little damage with the same target. The AoE actually surprised me. Uh, and this is with even seeing target skills doing extra damage. Alright, and we will just have a look at her ultimate. If that will actually hit for anything. No, actually. If we can't get a victory screen with her. It did damage. That's good. So the AoE attacks actually do damage and the single targets don't. That's weird. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Alright, but now we're going to phase 2. And we're actually going to get her ultimate um, turn 1. And like, I'm not going to show the, the rest of it. I'm just going to show up to that point and I guess that's going to be the video. Because uh, it's starting to get kind of lengthy. Now we have two stacks of her passive. Alright, that's good. That's great. Now we can get her passive, we can push to the next phase. And we will have her ult. So you will actually see the use case. Hopefully he doesn't die there. No, good, that's good. 
Uh, we don't have to buffer anything. I'm just gonna merge, use two of her attacks. Or actually, we will buff. I think this is gonna kill. No problem. And she will have her ult. I have two melee cards for next turn. I mean, this is going great. Unlike the floor one, where I didn't get any melee cards. <laughs> Okay, so here we have the boss, like, he's gonna use the that card there, and we're actually gonna disable it with the Arthur, because Arthur does have red tarmil, so we're gonna disable the effect anyway, so even if we did have a taunt unit, it would have been disabled. Um, what is this one? Um, misses when enemies, uh, when attacking enemies using a taunt, and you also need to attack him uh, with five damaging hits because he otherwise you can't kill him because he revives with like two or three percent of his health uh, but if you do this you should be able to survive it because uh, you do have a revive now i'll we'll just go ahead and do this hopefully arthur survives <laughs> the first two attacks <laughs> yeah and as you can see the boss revives he will probably heal a lot if he kills us, because uh, he does have crazy life steal. Uh, based on the damage, because the damage is just so completely nuts. Alright, so he actually. Liz and Melly survived, but he killed these two units who revived. And of course, Arthur healed the full because he has red tarmil. And yeah, that's it. And you just continue playing and. Clear both floor 2 and floor 3 with this team. <laughs> no problems. Alright, well that was Light Liz. I mean, her passive is quite nice. Um, it works very well in PvP. Uh, once her own buffs fall off here, the 15% increase, uh, she does sort of fall off. It's the same with Rimuru, if we have a look at Rimuru here. So, his passive, he gets a bunch of PS rate, 130% PS rate for 3 turns, and then after this, he basically starts not doing that that much damage anymore uh, she's sort of the same way it does that for five turns so it's a little bit better uh, it works quite well on the bird boss not as well on the deer boss because the deer boss is just a little bit slower sometimes you have to like stall out uh, to get like the perfect cards uh, to get gold cards for the final phase on floor three for example uh, just so you can hit like the damage cap because the boss revives and you don't want to hit within like the 20% mark. But yeah, that was Liz. She's quite a nice unit. Uh, not the top tier unit, like not as good as or as broken as um, Dark Traitor Meliodas. He just works everywhere, man. <laughs> He's so good in PvE, PvP, everything. Uh, Liz, she's doing okay. Both in PvP, both in PvE, you know. She's not the greatest, but... She is who she is, man. <laughs> and she has some nice cosmetics. Just look at that. I mean, just, just, just look at that. <laughs> yeah. And she actually got this new one, so she has her full cosmetic set now. Uh, with this... This cut-in. Quite cute. Alright. That's Liz. And that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you liked it, hope you found it useful, helpful, whatever. And I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!